what's up? Today, I'm gonna explain to you guys what kitchen tools I think are worth investing some serious money into, and at the end of the video, some controversial items that I think are not worth spending money on. But before I start, let me clarify that you do not need expensive kitchen tools to make great food. In fact, two weeks ago, I made what I thought was one of the best meals of my life while cooking in a rented condo with a grocery store knife and disposable aluminum pans. However, higher end cooking gear can make cooking a lot more enjoyable and give you some results that just aren't achievable otherwise. So the first expensive piece of cookware that I think is very worth buying is a Vita Prep. I think they're called Vita Mixes now. Either way, after using a lot of different blenders over the years, there's nothing that compares in terms of performance to the classic 5200 Vitamix with the 64 ounce jar. Without a doubt, these are the standard issue blenders in all of the restaurant industry. Nearly 100% of the serious restaurants that I've worked in have at least one, but usually two or three Vita preps on hand. So why are these blenders worth $500? Well, they just fricking perform every day, all day, and without complaint. The build quality is rugged and it takes a lot of abuse to actually burn these out, like pure negligence. The jars themselves are made of super thick plastic and are much easier to clean than some of the more consumer grade blenders that I've seen out there. And the blades can be easily popped off for deep cleaning. Also, when it comes to actually blending food, this blender is the best at it. By far, the quality of the puree that you get out of this thing is nothing short of pure luxury, especially when you use it on the highest speed. Creamy soups, smoothies, sauces, anything that you need to make smooth AF, it's gonna be noticeably better with a Vitamix. I get that 500 bucks is a lot to spend on any kitchen appliance, but let's assume that you've already got the basics dialed in, like a few heavy bottom pots and a knife that you actually like using. And then let's also assume that you, like me, like drinking smoothies a couple times a week and don't want raspberry seeds stuck in your teeth. If that's the case, then this blender is gonna be well worth your money. Almost all of the other blenders on the market, no matter how expensive they are, are pretty much junk. And I feel pretty strongly about that. If you wanna pick up a Vitamix, by the way, I'll throw a link in the description. And full disclosure, Lauren and I will get a very, very, very small piece of that sweet Amazon money if you decide to buy it through our link. Just be warned. Okay, the next expensive tool that I think worth spending your money on is a KitchenAid stand mixer. I'm being brand specific here because at least at the consumer level, KitchenAid is the only mixer that I've used. I've heard fine things about Breville and a few of the other brands, but I don't feel comfy signing off on those because I've never used them. Why is a stand mixer worth spending a few hundred of your dollars on? First, there's foods that you can make with a stand mixer that you just cannot with a bowl and a spoon. For example, highly enriched breads like brioche generally can't be made without a mixer. Perfect baguettes are made easier and better with a stand mixer. You need a mixer to make certain types of pizza dough. And in my opinion, making great cookies requires mechanical force. There's a long list. That list also includes all the cool things you can make when you start buying the attachments. I'm talking about extruded pasta, rolled pasta, sausage, other stuff. In my experience, most of these attachments work really well because they rely on a pretty powerful little motor that I find to be very reliable. Out of everything on this list, the KitchenAid might be the one thing that actually adds a lot of possibility in terms of what you can actually produce in your home kitchen. The others are more for making things better or easier or more enjoyable. And yeah, I just love my KitchenAid. Next up is this large walnut cutting board. It's made by a brand on the other side of the Mississippi in Illinois called Booze Block. They're pretty popular here domestically in the US, but I'm not sure if they ship to rest of the world. This board though is the centerpiece of my kitchen and I've been using it multiple times a day, multiple times per week, every week for the last like nine years and I absolutely love working on it. Cost wise when I bought this, it was about $200 US that has since crept up to about 300, but they do make a less expensive maple version that looks pretty cool and I can't really think of why it also wouldn't be a great buy. Why is this cutting board better than a $20 piece of plastic? To put it as simple as I can, comfort. First of all, this board is very big and whatever I'm cutting on it fits on the board. I really hate that situation where I'm cutting vegetables and some of them are piled up on the counter, some of them are on my cutting board. It's just a mess and that makes me feel insane. Second, it just feels good on my hands. Wood is a fun thing to cut vegetables on. It's soft on my fingertips, it feels good on my palms, and overall, it's just a great experience. 
The only downside to this board is that it requires a little bit of ongoing maintenance in the form of oiling every few months, and it's kind of a pain to wash if you don't have a gigantic sink. But I've had this board for about, I don't know, nine years at this point. I really haven't oiled it that much and I don't take that good care of it, but it still looks very good. And like I said, it's the center point of my kitchen and I would not live without it. The next kitchen tool that I think is really worth spending some of your hard earned cash on is a vent hood that's actually vented to the outdoors. This vent hood behind me cost $800 and was about $200 to vent outside of my home. In total, that's about $100 more than I spent on this gas stove, but it was worth every penny. I think everybody watching this video has smoked up their house at least once and knows that that sucks. A surefire way to make cooking not fun at all is to be running around your house turning off smoke alarms while possibly burning the thing that's creating all of that smoke. Not to mention that smoky kitchens make all of the fabrics in your house stink and they leave a very yucky film of vaporized grease on pretty much every surface. A good powerful vent hood like this one deals with almost 100% of those problems. To clarify, when I say good, I mean at least 600 CFM or cubic feet per minute, preferably more, and the hood needs to be vented outside of your house. Most of the hood vents that are above your stove right now or in your microwave just shoot hot air out the front or worse, back inside of your cabinets. This is the first time in my life where I've cooked at home under a hood with a meaningful draw and all I can say is that it makes a huge difference. I know it's expensive, but it really makes cooking at home a lot more enjoyable and if you can afford it, it's worth every penny. The last thing that I think is really worth spending some money on if you're getting more serious about cooking at home is a nice Dutch oven. What do I mean by nice? Le Creuset basically. I'll admit that I haven't used every nice Dutch oven on the market, but I just know that Le Creuset is a classic brand for a reason. Their enamel coating lasts forever and if you take care of it and don't abuse it, Le Creuset guarantees it for your whole lifetime. Now, can you in the short term achieve almost the exact same results with a $40 Dutch oven? Of course, and if you're on a really tight budget, I would say go ahead and get something from Walmart or Target, but just know that the enamel coating inside will probably disintegrate in like two, maybe three years max, especially if you use it over high heat daily, like I do. In contrast to that, this Le Creuset Dutch oven costs about $350, so you know, like 10 times more expensive, but to me, it's an heirloom piece of cookware that I expect to last for most of my life. I use it at least four to five times per week, and I really enjoy it, it's beautiful, the shape is intelligently designed, the coating is a dream to cook with, and it holds and transfers heat to food brilliantly. If I had to replace all of my cookware tomorrow, this Dutch oven would be the first thing that I put in my cart. I love it, and I think you would also probably love to have one. So that's a short list of the things that I think are worth spending a little bit of money on. And by the way, I bought all of those things while earning a chef's salary, which if you didn't know, is not a lot. So if you enjoy cooking, these are the things that you can probably afford right now that have a really high return on investment. What about the things that are expensive that I do not think are worth spending money on? Well, I'll get to those, but first I need to thank the sponsor of this video, Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a daily newsletter that you don't have to spend any money on. It's free and delivered to your inbox Monday through Sunday. Just like anybody, I'm guilty of getting caught in a mindless phone scroll, especially in the mornings when laying in bed. But Morning Brew has helped me put some substance back into the mix. Their newsletters help me get up to speed on business, finance, and tech, and all for only about five minutes a day. The information in the newsletter is laid out in a way that's witty, relevant, and actually written in a style that I want to read. At the end of the day, all I want to know is just what's going on in the world without having to sift through dry, partisan, traditional media to find out. Just this week, I learned that the S&P 500 had its biggest four-day gain since June, and fun fact, there's a fantasy league out there for the Great British Bake Off, so I'm really covering all my bases, you guys. There's really no reason not to subscribe to Morning Brew, to be honest, especially if you're interested in anything business, finance, or tech. It's completely free and takes less than 15 seconds to subscribe, so head to Morning Brew Daily dot com slash Lagerstrom or click the link in my description to sign up. Thank you, Morning Brew. Okay, the first item that I don't think is worth the money is expensive designer stoves. I won't name names of brands here, but you guys probably know who I'm talking about. These stoves cost anywhere from $3,000 to $20,000 and are usually six burners. They have two separate oven compartments and they usually have some kind of flat top that no one uses. I get a lot of messages from people asking me what stoves they should buy and if expensive ones are worth it. And they're just not because of the simple fact that they don't cook your food better or make it easier for 
you to make food. The two things that I would use to justify any new gear purchase. In fact, I've cooked on quite a few of these $10,000 stoves in rich people's houses. And a lot of the time they're not tuned properly and they end up being way underpowered despite claiming to offer many tens of thousands of BTUs. Now, do these stoves look cool? Yeah, and if I was a rich dude designing a really nice looking rich dude kitchen, sure, $10,000 stove, why not? Throw it over there by my $10,000 wine fridge filled with all my $10,000 rich dude wine. But if you're like me, just a regular dude who cooks every single day, all you need is two to three burners, preferably at least one of which is at least 15,000 BTU, and then an oven that can hold a couple of sheet trays and can go to about 500 F, but preferably 550. And that's literally all you need to cook 99% of the food on this channel or in life in general. A few exceptions apply to smoked, grilled, or pizza oven foods, but I'll get to those in just a second. The stove I use in all of my videos cost me about $950 US, and for me, it's great. If I was buying a new stove today, I would probably buy the exact same one. And if you're interested in this one, I'll link to it in the description. The next item that I think is not worth the money is gonna be controversial, so I'll just say it an outdoor pizza oven. I know that that seems like kind of a hot take and a lot of you guys out there are gonna be like, hey, Bri, that's my favorite. Pizza oven is life, blah, 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 blah. I get it, just let me explain. I have a pizza oven, but I don't use it that often. And when I do, I don't have very much fun. The temperature regulation is super fickle. You have to turn the pizzas almost constantly. And I don't really have the setup outside where I can make the pizzas next to the oven. Instead, I have to make them indoors and then one at a time, bring them outdoors to cook them. That severely limits my pizza output. I think we all envision having a nice rustic pizza party in our backyards with some wine and some buddies, and it's all very romantic, but for me, the reality of it all is just way less cool. I personally prefer to have everybody here in my kitchen around the island talking to me while I'm firing pizzas off in my oven, as opposed to me just like, going in and out constantly while sweating and being stressed out. I'm not here to tell you that outdoor pizza ovens are bad. If I had a bigger one with a bigger area to build the pizzas in, I'd probably feel a little bit differently. But for now, my pizza oven is probably gonna be staying in the garage. The last piece of expensive cookware that I definitely can't recommend wasting your money on is expensive nonstick pans. I've talked about this a little bit in previous videos, but let me rehash two facts about nonstick pans that you might not know. Number one is that no matter what, your nonstick pans coating will degrade over time and you'll have to buy a new one. The second fact is that there is actually very little that separates a $150 pan from a $40 one in terms of performance. This all clad nonstick pan, for example, is a very, very nice pan, but given that you're gonna be using it over medium to low heat most of the time, it doesn't really matter that there's a bunch of copper or whatever inside. I mean, it is very nice, but your eggs probably aren't gonna know the difference. It's just overpowered is all that I'm saying. This restaurant grade Winco nonstick pan, on the other hand, cost $25 and it has made me three to four eggs for breakfast five to six days a week for like the last two years. That's a lot of eggs. In general, I think that your money is just way better spent on something like a range, a Dutch oven, or some really nice fully clad stainless steel cookware. That's just my opinion though on what expensive cookware has brought me the most dividends over the last few years. Let me know in the comments if you guys agree or disagree with any of these choices. And I'm sure plenty of you are gonna be pretty red hot about the whole pizza oven debate. I look forward to it. I'll be back on Thursday with a full recipe video. And as always guys, thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video and I'll see you next time.